Monday morning. It is uh, April 25th, 2022. 2022? 2022. I gotta catch myself. You know, there's so many things that we say that you don't think about it. You know, you just say it because, oh, 2022. No, it's 2022, right? I don't know, we gotta second guess ourselves as far as language because it seems like we've been trained a certain way. And it's what we hear. So we repeat the same old thing over and over again. Like, can't fight City Hall. <laughs> you know, there's so many things that I can't even think of right now. Yeah, I got my glasses on today, so I might look a little bit different. But I can see a heck of a lot better. Eyes are kind of getting worse, so I'm wearing the glasses more. Don't need them to read yet, but at some point, I'll be getting bifocals, I'm sure. Getting old. So, I had LASIK surgery back in 2006. I think it was, got my eyes fixed. My eyes have always been horrible, horrible, blind. And uh, I got LASIK, LASIK, LASIK? I don't even know what it is, LASIK, I think it's a K. Yeah, LASIK surgery back in 2006. And for a long time, uh, I could see really well, perfect. And then the last few years, really last, I'll say three years, but really the last two years, it really started kicking. And uh, I started traveling on the road more, driving, and I realized, Man, I can't see the freaking road signs until I'm like right there. And then a lot of times I'll drive at night, leave at night because they're a long trip and try to read the road signs uh, at night. Oh man, it was getting rough. So it's kind of becoming a little dangerous. So I got the glasses here in the last few weeks and I've been wearing them more, kind of getting used to them again. I used to wear glasses all the time up to 2006, but now back at it, I guess, oh man. It's just the way it goes but yeah I mean language and how we how we say things we repeat the same things and I find myself doing it and then I just like now like why did I say that it's because you're kind of indoctrinated to say those things you're indoctrinated you know indoctrination everywhere yesterday I was at uh, I don't even know if I should say it an induction ceremony all right and you know it's just <laughs> high school thing and so you this you get it's a national honor society all right you know they're formed in, i think 1921 i did a little research on it and you know part of the ceremony is they've got four pillars and you know i don't know what is it strength the character leadership and service i think not strength maybe it's something else i don't know it's something anyway there's four pillars Let's see how much i learned four pillars watch this little rabbit let the rabbit hop off there we go rabbit is safe safe food. so there was um the four pillars of of the national honor society and what they did at the what they did i'm just looking around rabbits everywhere there's three and what i did was um i'm not even paying attention i'm distracting you're probably done watching me by now so what they did, they went up there and they discussed the four pillars, what they are. And then each time they would light a candle. The thing is, the candle that they would light, it's a, uh, you know, it was one of those uh, ones with batteries. I don't need this on now. There are ones with batteries. And, you know, like the little fake flame is about that tall. And so the, the first one's lit. This is the pillar of blah. This is the pillar of this. This is the pillar of that. This is the pillar of that. And they discuss it and, you know, and then they'd hand it out these little, you know, little tea light candles with the battery in it, with the fake flame. And they did that and they handed it out to everybody that was now the new member of the National Honor Society and they were all holding their candle. And then I thought, I'm sure back in 1921 or whenever the practice started, they had real candles. You know, you'd light the flame and, you know, it's more symbolic and I mean, you know, it's more, uh, or ceremonial and I think you know how traditions kind of change you know and they kind of maintain the same the same flavor but it's just interesting to me how artificial it's become and I think that's with a lot of things everything that used to be real has been transposed oh, with this layer of artificiality and I don't know you know it got me thinking about um you know the ritualistic nature of things the the indoctrination, you know, and how things are. And I mean, just with my language, I was just talking about, we're indoctrinated into so many things, you know, it's like, what, what do we really know? 
I guess is what it comes down to. What do you really know? You're told that Santa Claus comes to your house on Christmas Eve, slides down the chimney, a red and white suit, which didn't exist until Coca-Cola marketed that, you know, back in early, I don't know, what was it? Early 1900s, I'm thinking 1920s or 30s. I, you know, and so that's what we believe because that's all we've known. That's all we've been told. That's all that's been shown to us. Easter bunny hopping around, a bunny delivering eggs. You know, and that's mixed up in all kinds of pagan ritualistic traditions and such. And we, we just, you know, it's this blending of, of semi-truths. And it's, to me, I find it, I don't want to say disturbing, but I find it very, um, it's like, who are we? I mean, who are we? I had this discussion, and I don't want to get into this part of it, but I had this discussion on the spaces that I did on Friday, Twitter spaces, where people can jump in, and we just have a big chat, went for like five hours, something like that. And, you know, one of the topics that came up at the end, you know, there was somebody from Denmark named Daniel who popped in, and we started kind of talking about the perspective of what's your perspective of what's going on in Ukraine? What's your perspective of the what you see in the America right now? And just kind of getting that outside feel. And a lot of it was the same thing that some of us had in the chat. It's, uh, it's, it's good to get different perspectives, you know, an outside perspective as far as what's, you know, because we're not always right. Nobody's right all the time. But, you know, all the traditions that we hold dear I mean, you think about what they are. We're told certain things to be true, and are they? You know, there's a lot of things that have not been revealed to us that are held in secrecy. Uh, where does this come from? Where does that come from? What's May Day? You know, what's May 1st? What's that represent? And um, we just kind of go along with it. We just kind of go along with it, and before you know it, you're going to college. You know, I saw a lot of people yesterday, I'm going to college for to get a degree in radiology. You know, I'm going to college, and I'm going to get this degree, and I'm going to cure cancer. And I, I, it's almost like you don't realize that you're just repeating the same, walking in the same footsteps as everybody else. The cures are already out there. Knowledge is already out there. It's just been suppressed and it's been hidden because it doesn't benefit the control the control structure. And here we, again, you know, we have the same people repeating the same lives, the same paths that other people have done before them, and nothing changes, nothing uh, moves forward. It's almost as though we're stuck in this... It's like this, um, somebody described it once, and it was David Icke. He was on like an ayahuasca journey, and I remember this. And he says, there, it's almost like we, he was in, you know, in these visions, you know. It always kind of stuck with me, the symbolism of it. It's like we've got this, this river of life. You know, it just, it flows, and it's just, and I always say, you know, get in the canoe. And just get in the canoe and let it take you where it takes you, because sometimes when you fight it, doesn't work out. You get out on the shore, you think, oh, this is cool, I'm going to stop here. And then it's like, eh, that's not your path. Get in the canoe, and when it, when, it, when it stops, it stops. It'll take you where you need to go. Don't force it. Just go with the current. Go with the flow. And so there's this river of life, I think, that if we just kind of go with the current and we align ourselves with it and let it take us where we're supposed to go, we end up where we're supposed to go. However, in his vision, it was we're in this river, however... Here we are in this river of life, but we've gotten stopped. And we're in this circling whirlpool in the middle of this river to where we're kind of trapped in this, this artificial enforced reality of this time to where we have not known of the truth of who we are. We do not know the truth of all things around us. It's as though we've been contained in this, in this circle, you know, this time loop almost. And we're not breaking out of it. And at some point we break out of it. But until then, it's almost like we keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again and nothing changes and nothing gets better. 
you know, the same power structure continues to try to control grid us. The same power structure tries to steal our energy. You know, this whole vampire system I talk about, this whole thing. And, and we're, we're contained in that for now, but I think there's little spurts shooting off that whirlpool. And I really feel that now. So many other people are waking up and seeing, and wait a minute, we're just spinning around in this freaking toilet bowl. It's time to kind of break out of it. But I still see a lot of the, the, the mind control that, that, you know, hey, we're going to keep doing the same thing and it's going to be better. You know, we're just going to pay $40,000 a year for college instead of $4,000 a year. And we're still not going to cure cancer. And we're, we're still not going to produce any better people to become politicians. And it's, um, it's almost like at it, some point it can't sustain itself any longer. That, that it just it just breaks up all on its own because it becomes so unsustainable. You know, and I think a lot of the problem, a lot of what will make it unsustainable is the monetary system. You know, and that's the one thing that I keep going back to. You know, I'll wax spiritual all day long and, you know, look at things, you know. I, you know, the monetary system is the least of my concerns. It really is. I don't even, I don't even care. I don't even want to be a part of it. You know, I just want to be left alone. I just want to be free to live how I want to live, like most people. You know, but the money keeps injecting itself. You know, hey, we're going to try and rob this from you. Hey, we're going to try and get more of this from you. And that's what overlays the whole thing. You know, it's this this monetary control. And so that's that's why I've kind of focused more of my time on, okay, how do we how do we fix the money? What do we do about it? How do we get out of this system? You know, this whirlpool that we're spinning in. You know, and I, I see cryptocurrency as a, uh, a way to do that. Now you look today, you're like, oh my God, Litecoin's a hundred bucks. Well, there's only so much to go around. So if it's a hundred dollars and it takes you a hundred dollars worth of energy, um, it's probably a, a good good time to buy some. I mean, it's on sale. And so you can get frustrated and say, Ugh, we're never going to break out of this system. The thing is, if you get more of those tools in your possession, the good people get more of those tools in their possession. It's just, it's that much quicker that we break out of it. And then I look today, Mimble Wimble is like 23% activated. Uh, it looks like around March 2nd, 3rd-ish. Uh, Mimble Wimble will be, boom, set. And then two weeks after that, I think it becomes active on the blockchain, completely ready to go. And you've got privacy transactions with Litecoin by, you know, the middle of May, May 20th-ish, May 18th or something. It's a no-brainer. Um, I've looked at the monetary system and looked for ways to get out of it and looked for good tools to use to no longer participate in the old system. And Litecoin's one of those that I've found to be true. That's what I focus on. Silver's another one. And then what are the properties of silver that have been hidden from us? You know, there's all these legends. Oh, the silver bullet kills the werewolf. And, you know, silver, you know, the magical qualities of silver. What are they? There probably are some. Because when you feel it, you know there's something special. You hold a silver coin or anything silver in your hand. And it's like it activates something in you. You know, there's just something deeper about it, some something more spiritual about it. You know, gold can be the same way. I just think silver is just more of a, something more about it. And again, what do we not know? Or what are we not being told that we really do know inside? And you think, oh yeah, that was interesting. And then you walk on and you keep spinning in the whirlpool. But when you have those moments, those epiphany moments, I don't even know what is it epiphanatic moments, epiphanatic, epiphany, epiphanies, uh, when you have those bursts of inspiration or bursts of knowledge, then, I mean, don't doubt that. I mean, there's something to it. It's just that we haven't been told that. I mean, we believe in the magic of some fat guy sliding down a chimney. We believe in the magic of a bunny leaving eggs around. I mean, we, we believe in leprechauns showing up and, you know, doing tricks on us. I think there's more truth to that than the other two. Little people. You look at the Menahune in, in Hawaii. There's all kinds of, you know, little people, um, mischievous little people in, in different cultures. So, I, I, you know, not so much against that one. So, but, but you, there's some truth to it at some level. You know, we believe in magic. 
We manifest magic at Christmas time. I mean, at Easter, these different holidays, we manifest the magic because we give power to that belief system, that idea that that exists. And we teach our children that. So why can't we reinvent the world by giving power to something else? Giving power to new money. Giving power to truth, principles, ideals, and manifesting those. You know, heroiz heroism. You know, you, you look at the, the stories of ancient Greece and you have these heroic figures, these, these people that did amazing things. Well, why can't we do that? Because, I mean, the people we're fighting really aren't powerful. They're just vampires. They're just shells. They have no power unless they take it from us. And really, they can't even take it from us. We have to give it to them. So we're just willfully giving it to them. So let's just not do that anymore. Let's lay the vampires overnight. And it's just like, <clears throat> light flash. <clears throat> they all fall. It's that simple. I just don't give them power. There's just so many things. So many things that, uh, you know, I just... It, it, I start thinking and I think it's important just to step back and think and think about these things. And I mean, the, the fanciful things that we kind of have made part of our culture and made a reality because we've given it power and energy. Think of those things. So why can't we do something that actually benefits humanity rather than, you know, just kind of eh, keep some floating from holiday to holiday. I mean, It'd be very easy. Just give power to it. There's a great series on stars, and it was a book, and I can't remember who the author was. It's called American Gods. And the premise behind it is that there have always been gods. You know, you go back to Greek mythology, you know, the Sumerians, you know, just all throughout cultures, there's gods everywhere. And they, they have, you know, the Native Americans, they had their gods. And, but they died out. Because the people no longer gave it power. The people didn't believe anymore. And it's it's really this struggle. It's a story about America and what gods are going to take control of America or at least have power in America because the people believe in them. And so you have ancient gods like Odin, Wotan, you know, Odin that still have power because the people who brought that, that, that idea, of, you know, from the Norse mythology over. You've got other gods like Ostar you know, for Easter, you know, just the, the life bringing and, you know, the coming to life and fertility and all that. You, you've got, you've got different gods that are kind of battling it out for power. And it's really just a, am I still relevant? And they're personified and different actors. Um, but it comes down to, there's new gods that are being created, you know, digital gods. Mr. World is a god, you know, because he's connected to all these electronic devices and because everybody gives energy to it. I'm giving energy to it right now using my phone. And so it almost manifests a new god, you know, that's, that, that's gaining power from that. And the more people, you know, do that or go into the metaverse, we'll have this metaverse god, you know, and, and then the old gods will be fighting the metaverse god. And it's really us fighting. It's really us giving power. Are we giving power to the vampire system? Are we giving the power to that vampire god that's been draining us forever? Are we giving power to the techno god, you know, that's this new technology? And what does that do for us? Good and evil, whatever. We decide. Is it a good god or a bad god? So you look at the Greek myths. It's like, how can these gods be so brutal and yet help and then be not helping? It's because they're a manifestation of us. And when you look at it through that lens, and that's why I like this series, American Gods, it's, it's like we're the ones giving them power. We're the ones manifesting them. We are the ones who choose whether or not we're going to believe in that. And when we believe in it, we give it power. So what are we going to give our power to? What American God is going to be the one at the forefront And there's, there's one scene in there where <laughs> there's a, they talk about a black Jesus, a Mexican Jesus, you know, and this and that. And, and uh, there, there's like all these Jesuses, you know, all kinds of different Jesuses. You know, it's like the one God that's like all over the place. And then the question is, why are there so many Jesuses? I'm paraphrasing. Why so many Jesuses? And then uh, Odin, you know, the old, old Norse God says, world needs a lot of Jesus. You know, and it's just, um, it's, it's kind of a funny thing, but it's true. 
And so we manifest them in, in our own view. You know, we see it's a white Jesus. It's a black Jesus. It's a, you know, this Jesus, that Jesus, everywhere a Jesus. And so we kind of manifest that because everybody has, you know, you've seen the pictures, the old pictures of Jesus and, oh, this is what he looks like. How do we know that? How do we know that? And what difference does it make what he looks like or she looks like? What difference does it make? Because it, it's, it's a spirit. It's, just, it's son of God, you know, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever you want to label that as. And, you know, and this is where it's like, well, you really don't need a pronoun, do you? Because it's just like spirit. And, and so it's, we all have our vision of what we see and what we believe and what we manifest as, uh, you know, our connection. But we know deep down, really, when you strip all of that away, it's just, it's, we're connected at a spiritual level. So when you put a label on, well, it's it's a he, it's a she, it's a this, it's a that, you know, it looks like this color, that color, long hair, short hair. Take any form at once. God can take any form at once. Think back at the Greek myths. You know, Zeus comes down as a golden shower, you know, and rains. And, you know, there's all these, they take different forms. And why wouldn't they? They're gods. So why would it be, this has to be the way it is. And see, that, that just ends up dividing us because, nope, Jesus was white. No, Jesus was dark skinned. No, Jesus was this. And, you know, take that for any God. And it's, it's like, why, why does it have to be that way? We give power to everything. We can give power to division. We can give power to unification. It's really up to us. And that's what it comes down to. What is the American God going to be? What are the American gods going to be? Where are we going and what defines us? Is it everything that we've always been taught and we since we were children because that's just what we know? And we're going to stay in that same whirlpool and just spin in that river of life and got, not go anywhere? Or are we going to break out and say, you know what? So much of this doesn't matter. There's a spiritual truth out there, and we're not connected to it. And it's because others have given us the imprint or the, the idea of what it should be, rather than us. So, as I always say, you need to trust yourself. And when you have those moments of epiphany, those inspire, inspiring moments, those moments of inspiration, let's say it that way, listen to it. Feel it. Embrace it. Because then I think we're like shooting out of that whirlpool. We're, we're heading down that river of life again to where it's like, hey, okay, that makes sense. And you just follow those instinctual things that are already in you. Because you're reconnecting to you know, whatever you want to call it. What is really God? You. So always trust yourself. All right, I've got some work to do. Got some things to do. I got to go play with the bunnies. So I hope you have a wonderful day. You got any comments on this? Go ahead and leave them down below. I appreciate it. You know, I always respond to the comments. I, you know, you give your power to it, your energy to it. So I, I want to, I appreciate that. And I want to give energy back. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I really do. Always trust yourself. You know the truth. It's inside of you. Kind of break free from that, that matrix. Break free from that conditioning that uh, that's upon us. I think that's very important. And, uh, you know, going out and watching the rabbits, that's an important thing. Or just looking at the stars, you know, reconnecting with things that are real. All right. Love you all. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll probably talk again tomorrow. Have a good one.